Yeah, we find her. That beautiful girl we've been missing. We rather we wanna have her kissing. <laughs> we find her, now we love. Say go so the remix. DMB Talk Spice. Remix. Now if I had a loose like a bad phone connection, I'd change my game to get a better reception. Sit back, let's start this interaction. Don't fight the feelings, just a chain reaction. Your heart won't give you the wrong instructions. Like my GPS, yes, I got the right direction. We gotta merge together like a road intersection. Last stop is gonna be my love and affection. I ain't like the mother deuce, they wanna call you shorty, but I'ma call you a beautiful girl. I took you at your home. My mama saw it, she like, she's a very, very beautiful girl. I wanna put you in my video, cause you're so beautiful. You're a beautiful girl. So when you hear us in your radio, turn up your stereo. It's beautiful girl. Gotta find a shorty, what's worth of a lady? In nice, but maybe doesn't look like 40. It's taking a little time. I was just in no signs. Guys, when pretty smile, he was right on the pain station. I tried to make a conversation, only no arms, feeling so chill. I felt the sensation. It's been a while that I've been trying to find a beautiful girl. Now I realize I found me a beauty, beautiful girl. She's a man, she's a fine. I wish came true when I saw you, girl. God must have blessed me with your beauty, girl. Looking so right from your head to your toe. Chip like a cocoa bottle with a smile of a queen. My queen to be, you my destiny. Got a body of a goddess with your beauty. I'm impressed and I'm never in distress. Come on over and be mine. Things searching for a man and now all the cats keep looking to mine. With a sexy walk and a sexy talk. She must be from the planet called the sexy world. I know I ain't tripping better yet. I'm thinking put a ring on the finger. We look good together. Take your place in my heart with your beauty. I'm gonna say that I'll never turn away. Who would think I'm in love? So the way she smiles at me just really, really makes me weak. The way she speaks to me just really make me go so weak. Keep staring in her eyebrows. All I get to say is, wow, if you touch us and breathe at night, all I really want in my life, oh yeah. It's been a while that I've been trying to find a beautiful girl. Fine, fine, brown eyes, I found me a beauty, beautiful girl. She's my model, she's so fine. Presents and gifts, call, call me Santa. Santa. Claws, I make a heartbeat pause. That's my girl, homeboy, not yours. The girl of my dream, she's more than I ever thought. Show me ass and gotcha. I think I'm getting punked. She's what I really want, so I'm a go getter. Since I'm a go getter, you know I'm gonna get her. <laughs> and I will give her the world. Anything for my beautiful girl. Psych. <laughs> I'm 
they missing? I miss all your hugs, you're touching and kissing me. Love on the floor, the couch in the kitchen. One love enough, we're done enough. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen of Prestige on a day. How's everyone doing? This is Ola coming to you live from my Empire Pro Studios. If you can hear me loud and clear, uh, please do let me know in the chat. I'm coming over to the chat right away. As you're coming in, hit that like button, share and subscribe. Grab a link to the video and share it to a few people. It's Sunday evening, yes, another brand new week, 29th of January. Can you believe it? Uh, in my opinion, this month is actually going way too slow. But maybe because I'm looking forward to some stuff in February. Welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, D Love, good to see you. Hit that like button as you're coming in. Lady Navoa, good to see you. How are you? Uh, Angela, good to see you. Gorex Corner, good to see you. How's everyone doing? Everyone good? Everyone good? Let me see who else. We got Mo Fresh here. Uh, pink waving. Okay. All right. <laughs> I can't see the emoji, sorry about that. I think that's an emoji. Uh, good to see you. Uh, let me just go ahead and do this right away. Let's let's do some house cleaning before we continue. If you're not yet a member of the Proceed family on WhatsApp, you can join us so we can continue the conversation back there every now and then. Uh, www.nolaandola.com slash WhatsApp is where you want to go. If you're having trouble using that link from your phone, you can also use this phone number and we'll get you inside of the group over here we talk about relationships we talk about power we talk about seduction we talk about attraction we talk about emotional intelligence we talk about patience we talk about love and we have some time if we do have time we we'll talk about marriage but honestly there's no need to talk about marriage if you understand all these other things uh, that we have in place with that being said today we're going to be covering uh some news around our uh, Wumi Toriola marriage uh that apparently crashed uh some one year ago but she's just making announcements about it why do i care right because we have to extract the lessons there's some lessons okay also in addition to that charles okocha okay some of you don't know who charles okocha is this guy right here this guy let, let, hold on one second this guy right here Ha ya dum, ya dum, ha ya dum, ya dum, ha ya dum, ya dum. Now listen to Your daddy, your daddy, your daddy, your daddy. That's Charles Okocha right there. Some people call him Igwe Tupac. Okay, some people call him Igwe, Igwe Tupac. So anyway, um, like I said, today is Sunday evening. We're gonna talk about some things. All right, I just shared uh, the link. Feel free to call in. If you have specific questions about what we're talking about, or something else uh, entirely different, it's, it's fine, you know. Uh, I will take a pause and then uh, we'll talk about it together, right? Uh, just keep in mind that when you do call into the show, you do wave your rights to the audio and the video. And we don't have to keep you on the screen if you don't want to, so just let me know that. But there you go, the calling link is pinned all the way to the top. And uh, yep, just wanted to let you know that really quickly. All right. So now you guys can can hear me clearly, right? Can you guys hear me clearly? You can hear my voice clearly. Let me actually check myself about that.
All right, we're back. I'm just checking the audio, making sure everything is fine with the audio. Looks like we're good to go there. All right. If there's any issue during the course of the show, I am checking the chat. I am checking the chat. And then we can. Angela says yes. You know, so I appreciate you. Thank you so much for letting me know. All right. So we have this. Uh, <laughs> and now we've added him also to a bunch of sound effects here. So anytime uh, somebody, uh, you know, anytime I feel like somebody should collect small, you may hear. Igwe Tupac may, may have to chime in and say, Ya daddy. Ya daddy. <laughs> All right. All right. Good, good. With that being said, I think we have uh, so a, a fantastic topic to cover today. So do me a favor. Go ahead and hit that like button, share, and subscribe. That gets people in here. Okay. That gets people here. All right. I know it's a Sunday evening, but today we're talking about this uh, young lady right here. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, sorry about that. Um, uh, yes, as you probably know, I'm, I already shared that with you guys. I'm coming out of uh, a little bit of under the weather, but I made it. <laughs> I made it, but we're here. My eyes are a little bit clearer. They're better, you know. But uh, with that being said, today I want to talk about uh, Wumi Toriola. Then I'm also, there's an article here, out here on... Um, on, uh, where is this? This is on Daily Post, Nigerian Daily Post. This was published on January 25, some few days ago. And I thought, you know, I saw this news some few days ago, just that we have quite a bit going on. And we can only cover so much. But, you know, I've noticed some lessons here that we should uh, extract out of the situation. All right, she's a Nollywood actress, so I'm just going to read this and then we're going to top her up you know talk about it real quickly also today i will give you the 10 bad reasons to end a marriage 10 bad reasons to for divorce okay we're going to talk about that as well today so stick that out because that's a very very important one for you you might have somebody that needs this at some point 10 bad reasons to get divorced okay uh i can hear somebody right now saying what is that if people feel like well, i know but I promise you, I will, you know, we got to do, we got to analyze it together. Okay. All right. So welcome, welcome. If you're just coming in, hit that like button, share and subscribe. I'm going to read this article really quickly together. Uh, I'm just going to read it out loud and then I'll analyze and then we'll take it from there. Then we'll jump to the, um, to Igwe Tupac. He also has some things to say about, about uh, all this divorce all over the place, you know. But anyway, this uh, Daily Post, shout out to dailypost.ng, says Nollywood actress and producer Olawumi Toriola has announced a divorce from her husband, the actress, who made the announcement on Tuesday, on Tuesday in a trendy post on Monday on, on, her, on her Instagram page, added that she had been separated from her husband over a year ago. Okay. There has been a lot of uh, media attention on my marriage lately. Yes, indeed. I quote, there has been a lot of media attention on my marriage lately. Yes, indeed. The marriage is over. Let me just uh, do something real quickly. All right. Let's give me one second. All right. Okay. Okay, so, and I quote, there has been a lot of media attention on my marriage lately. Yes, indeed, the marriage is over. It didn't work out. We have gone our separate ways for over a year now. There was no need for drama, hence my reason for not telling my fans about it, right? Now, I don't think it's a bad idea to tell your fans about it. It just depends on the nature of the announcement. So, the problem with a lot of people is that the announcement is laced with uh, the announcement is usually laced with uh, sarcasm, condescension, shots at the partner. You know, um, you should make some kind of announcement, and preferably, uh, if you are a person of status, a person that you have a followership that affects your income, 
uh, you should make some kind of announcement, but preferably it's that announcement should be written by a PR specialist because then they can remove their own feelings for you. They can remove your feelings for you because they don't have that feelings. But the goal of that is to make the public know that you're not, you know, why is that important? If they see you walking out of a hotel with another man in public, at least people can say, oh no, we know that they're separated and they're divorced, right? So somebody said, you can't satisfy a lot. I know because this is tough. <laughs> life is tough. <laughs> it's not just marriage that's tough. It's just life is just tough by itself. Okay. So that that's right there. Okay. Now recall that the actress ad in a now deleted post last year left a domestic. There you go. She said it, she did announce, but the internet never forgets. Mm -hmm. She left, apparently she left a domestic violence and abusive relationship. For her well-being she deleted the post and she's claiming now that she didn't make an announcement well the internet never forgets okay however our estranged husband had a few days ago, at a few days ago accused the actress of physically assaulting his mother okay so a lot of people want to say uh some things are two-way streets blah 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 yeah i get it right but uh <laughs> good to see you d'souza i see you i see you d'souza good to see you um however a strange husband had a few days ago accused the actress of physically assaulting his mother describing his marriage to toriola as a total regret now i don't know the full details of what happened in that marriage Okay, but if you look at the whole marriage and you said it's a, it's, a, it's a regret, especially as a man. So, I'm guessing you didn't learn any lesson. You know, that kind of camouflage, like you learned your lesson. What is the lesson? That that person was evil. That person you married was evil and you shouldn't have gotten with them. Nah, that's cap. All right? That's cap. Let me let me align my, my thingies here, you know, just to make sure. Stop the cap. <laughs> yeah, that's 100% cap. Okay. There's no such thing as... Sorry, I'm just trying to be comfortable here. There's no such thing as, oh yeah, the whole marriage was, was a regret. No, that's just your way of telling us that you didn't do anything wrong. It was all her fault. And that's cap. It doesn't matter what side is coming from, the man or the woman. It's pure cap. Okay. We got that. <laughs> Wahala. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. All right. So, um, I'm, 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 I'm trying to trace where I finished my reading. Okay, there's been a lot of uh, media lately. Yes, indeed. Recall. Okay, so he says accused. Okay, no regret. Now, okay, so now physical assaulting what mother? What does that look like? Okay, um, of course she will say. What did she say? Okay, I'm gonna read what she says first, and then we're gonna dissect it. Right, reacting to the allegation, Toriola debunked the claims. This is her reason to coming out to announce. After, one year after to do like an official announcement and even the announcement still collect water water but anyway saying and i quote i am not a violent person i have never had to exchange punches with anyone okay and never have been violent in my marriage this is not only a personal attack it is satanic okay it is against everything I stand for and believe. As a well-raised Yoruba lady, it is costly to lay your hands on your parents. I agree with her. <laughs> I agree with her. However, she's telling her own side of the story. So I can basically assume that she's capping big time continue yes ma i can assume that she's capping big time okay 
um she's a nice yoruba lady blah 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 all that kind of stuff right i believe i believe him too but i also believe that they're speaking from their own experience right uh oftentimes it's the woman that will say hey this person raised hands on me or something like that right and it may be a little bit different from what he remembers it can actually be exactly what happened right but the truth is that i'm trying to pull out of this is that people tend to have two different people tend to have completely different experiences when they're in the middle of crisis okay people tend to have two partners right uh, uh, two people that are a couple that are a couple they tend to have two different experiences when it comes to the events that transpired in the marriage in the relationship and this is where a lot of people fail right because what happens is that they, they get stuck on their own experience and they have very very low tolerance or very very low awareness that there is somebody else having a completely different experience why because from a logical standpoint it's like no what i see is what i see there couldn't be anything else there couldn't be any other type of story in this what happened is what happened right and this is the problem that a lot of people have if you if she curses the mother out right and maybe they were in the kitchen and they were tossing back and forth who's going to cook and the mother is like no it's my son's kitchen you're disrespectful and he might see that and say hey you are disrespectful to my mother let me give you another scenario what if he didn't see what happened the mother actually told her own side of the story now it makes three sides of the story right and the mother is like, come on, come on, money. She almost slapped me. <laughs> right? And this dude is one year later telling this story as if the story is actual facts. You've never heard this before? It happens all the time. People speak from their own experience. They tell stories from their own experience. And if you understand what stories are, they're is more of an art than is an exact science so people will always tell the stories from where they stand and a couple of other variables like their personalities right their temperament there's other a few other things that affect how people tell a story right so if he goes and posts it out there and he says you know what did he say accused of physical as physically assaulting his mother where what is the source of that story is it the mother that said that was the mother being was was she exaggerating people exaggerate a lot when they find themselves in crisis it's almost a default that they will exaggerate right you can look at some of the talking points online majority of them it's mostly about exaggerating very key thing to pay attention to why because of self-awareness it could be you tomorrow you find yourself in a situation and it's not a pleasant situation and you're not caught up in your feelings you want to tell the story are you self-aware enough to say you know what that really really made me feel bad and if I'm going to tell the story, I'm probably going to be telling the story from that standpoint. No, but this is my story. Well, I know. <laughs> I know. That's the, that's the whole point I'm making here. Oh, I, 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 you're right. That is, in fact, the whole point that I'm making here is your story. Is your story. How the other person remembers it may be different. Or the other person may be telling the story from a completely different standpoint and they might be the one exaggerating so what should you do in that situation this is why shalaya is a bastard a hundred percent of the time you want to make sure you don't get caught up in shalaya competition right shalaya competition the goal is often the need to be right oh for those of you that don't know what shalaya is it means mansplaining. It means over-explaining yourself. It's often a com it becomes a competition to be right. Hit that like button, I beg. Hit that like button. I've been told we're low on likes. Let's get it up to 20 likes. Thank you so much. I appreciate you.
okay so you want to be careful out there uh, should you tell your story I do think you should tell your story but you should leave some room for when the argument pops off remember we did a session it's a video I just released on on arguments right when that story when the people start arguing back and forth that argument is probably because they remember two different experiences one person is off the other person thinks they are right no you're probably not right too uh, the friction is happening because people had two different experiences you ever find yourself in a situation where you're like you're a liar you're just a liar or because you truly felt that you felt like that person is lying right because what you remember is completely you see i keep saying what you remember and right now you're ready to push me back and say no that's not what i remember that's what happened exactly you know if your goal is to be right i can give you that right now well, I, I i i i you're right because if you were so right and you're so confident that you're right why do you need to convince me why if that need to convince me doesn't really affect your desired outcome what is your desired outcome have you even identified what your desired outcome is me i just want peace of mind though i just want peace of mind it's like he's also like he thinks it's calm he's like a man just wants peace that's all he wants she's like i just want peace of mind though i just want peace of mind <laughs> right and uh the problem here is that a person that want peace of mind will probably express that a little bit better than that right but we've got a problem in society. Uh, a lot of people talking about this kind of conversations are, are trying to make it into exact science. They're not exact science. These things are based on people's experience, experiences. And when they tell the story, if it rubs the other person off the wrong way, they start to feel some type of way. Okay. So actually, this story is not directly linked to Charles Okocha. It's just that he said something that I felt like we should also uh, cover. Okay, and I'm gonna. He said something with respect to the. He has two kids. He has two young adult kids. I, I'm not sure. One of them is younger as a, a young adult. I'm not sure about the other one. Right. Uh, share this tab instead. Shout out to Post Niger. So there's this news. What was this? On the 26th was released. It says Charles Okocha reveals why he has never been married despite having two kids. Right. There's a study out there that I saw earlier today. I'll bring it to the surface later on when I do have time. Okay. And it's about more and more people are remaining single. I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. I don't think that's a bad thing necessarily. The key word is necessarily. All right. I just think there's a lot going on. And uh, obviously people are confused. All right. But I want to point out a few things here, right, to pay attention to. Number one is that he has two kids, okay? That means he's been engaging with women, one way, shape, form, or the other. He just hasn't gotten legally married, meaning signed some papers with the state with regards to the state recognition of an actual marriage, okay? That's all that means. Does that negate, does that negate the whatever he's trying to avoid let's see what's trying to avoid let, let me read it first right so it says uh, he also shared that he's happy with his current marital status a question for you i have a question for you are single people happier than married people that's a question that i have for you okay the father of two shared this in an exclusive interview with punch okay this is punch oh okay this is pause actually uh, with punch where he revealed that he has been he has never been married because he's taking his time to find the right woman in his words let's blow that up a little bit in his words the truth and i quote the truth is i have never been married in my life and i am a happy man right you and i know what is going on these days okay you see a couple married for a couple of years and next they are divorced people you see as role models are getting divorced 
and when you see them you're like what is going on that's where the title came from what is going on what is going on okay a lot is going on but one of the things that's going on is that there is a shift going on in human awareness and a lot of people are not willing they're fighting it you know we all don't like change right we're, all of us we don't like change right we push against it but the reality is the reality what is the reality he has two kids he has two kids that means god i don't know if he has two kids with two different women potentially with two different women okay now he has all of his stake all over the place he has to manage the stakes everywhere where they are right god help him and the state is now involved and now he's going to manage that situation let's say he's involved in some kind of child support situation co-parenting wahala right then he will realize that he's not really avoiding anything maybe he doesn't realize he's not avoiding anything a lot of people don't realize that whatever they were trying to avoid avoiding marriage they still have to deal with it this time around in a much more disorganized way because the energy is all over the place there's only so much energy energy is neither created nor destroyed but there's only so much of it that you have right you're going to be spread too thin you got kids all over the place but here you are you're you're saying we see what's going on people are filing divorce right so what should you learn what do you learn from the fact that people are filing divorce what is the society at large learning from this they are learning that Honestly, they're not learning anything, okay? <laughs> but on the surface, it looks like they're learning to avoid marriage altogether. Right? But marriage all along hasn't been the problem. The people in the marriage has been the problem. So if the people that have been avoiding marriage are still the problem and they're having two kids outside of wedlock, if they didn't have two kids outside of wedlock, how easy could their life be if they could be in a situation, right, where they didn't have to have those kids outside of wedlock, right? It's not a lot of people's fault. Maybe it's not it's uh, it's not ego ego two parts fault, right? <laughs> if it's listening to the to me right now, you'll be like, your daddy, your daddy, <laughs> your papa too. But <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> um. The point I'm trying to make here is that circumstances, I keep saying that, I need to say that because I want to be very sensitive. I try to be sensitive. However, some things need to be said and we need to address some things because even if you don't have the chance to do some things right again, um, you will have a chance to train your kids, to raise your kids, to learn some skill sets, to help them mitigate, to help them navigate this world, right? <laughs> In a world where you have to do kerewa. If you would naturally do kerewa, you can potentially have kids with people, right? If you are capable of having kids with people, you are capable of getting married. You are. And yes, getting married in a healthy way. But also if you are capable of just uh, options, delusion of options, an illusion and delusion of options, you're going to think, let me just leave this situation and escape and just make sure i live my better life in some situations yes you need to do that because your mental health and your own and your physical health and your physical presence is needed to make any of these things happen but majority of the reasons why people are filing these things is not they're bad reasons yes i said it there are bad reasons i know we live in a society where there's no such thing as a bad reason to divorce but there are bad reasons, okay? Because it's like, again, it's like the man, it's the same thing as the man who said um, the marriage was a regret. No, what do you mean the marriage? What did you learn from the marriage? Even if it ended up in divorce, you don't want to engage that because why? Because your own fart will smell in your face, right? You're afraid of what that would look like, right? It's not necessarily something you're aware of. But this happened on, on both sides, okay? Let me let me let me see what else is said here. So how then he asked a question. This is a question right here. This is a good segment question. 
he asked the question said how then do you want me to get into this marriage thing okay so let's reverse a little bit let's rewind back a little bit he said people you see as role models what is he talking about he's talking about celebrities that's not necessarily your role models they're just people like you okay they're trying to figure this thing out too right especially in the world that everything is changing women have more options they don't have to sit with bullshit so they might ask you for divorce for bullshit reasons yes it, why does this why does it seem like bullshit reasons because it's probably emotional at levels right so to use like what like you committed to 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 to, to, to that do us part right in rich in richness and in sickness and in health and in uh whatever and you either we're broke or not you're supposed to stay here forever this was supposed to be a commitment right most men are caught off guard with that some of these men that are caught off guard with that are also adultery committers serial adultery committers but they don't they feel like that's not like hey i could do what i do and still come back home i'm still i was gonna come right back to you right but unfortunately the ladies are saying hey <laughs> You know, this is it's a different horizon. I have options. I could do bad all by myself. You see what you see? You see? You think they're wise? <laughs> oh, Lord. Right? The ladies are saying, you be Mumu man. You are a Mumu man. Right? That's just where we are. That's what's going on, right? So what is the solution that the men of the society are now saying? Black men, listen to me carefully. What are they saying? They're asking questions. They're not assessing the situation. They're like saying, what is he saying? He said, these are people you have been looking up to and now they're divorced. Did you get close to them and ask them, if you don't mind me asking, not immediately, you, you know, you have to be sensitive because people going through divorce and they don't like it on both parts. Most of, they don't like the situation. They they don't get at least they didn't get into a marriage to get divorced. So something terrible must have happened, right? In terms of the breakdown, right? But after a little bit of time, are you able to say, if you don't mind, I would just like to learn how to, you know, what, what happened? What happened there? Or you don't do that at all. You just make up your mind. You think you knew what happened, right? What do people say? People these days are just asking for divorce. They say, I'm, I'm not happy. I'm no longer happy. And they ask for divorce. If you say things like that, I know that you haven't learned anything in your past situation or you're not open to learning anything. And you're probably going to end up with a terrible situation if you're talking like that. If you assume that people that had divorce just, just want to go there and destroy it. If that's your assumptions and your talking points, that's fear talking. You're going to attract what you fear the most. There are real reasons why people will get to a space and say they're no longer doing it. Okay? There are some 10 bad reasons I will talk about later on. I call them bad reasons because, you know, because some people assume they are bad reasons. But I'll break them down, you know. I think they are bad reasons for a lot of people. I think for some people, I think it's real. But we'll talk about that when we get there. What is he saying? He said, how then do you want me to get into this marriage thing? How do you want me to get into this marriage thing? All right. So he's operating from a place of fear, but he has two kids outside of wedlock. The number one reason why you probably should get into this marriage thing, not just get into it, learn how it works before you get into it, right? If you're afraid of people that have failed at it, meaning divorce, right? Ask them questions. Learn why they typically fail. Beyond just the recorded data at the court. What the courts are recording of infidelity, finance, and something else. What is it? Finance, infidelity, and there's one more that they always record. Irreconcilable differences. Those are not the reasons why people file divorce. There are deeper reasons. Those are the symptoms. Okay? Those are the symptoms. You need to find out what the actual disease or diseases are. That's what you need to find out. Okay? And I can tell you what it is right now. There are four of them. There's pride, unrealistic expectations, lack of friendship, 
and the inability to find their way to Kiriwa, right? However, between the, rec the recorded reasons at the court and what I just told you before, there's a lot of things that transpire. There's a story. There's a bunch of in-betweens. And those stories, right, those case studies is what you need to engage and start assessing and learning how how did you get to being at the courthouse and then we're recording infidelity? How did that happen? Many people don't ask how. They just know how they feel and they're ready to destroy whatever it is that's making them feel that way. Does that make sense? Whatever it is, whatever it looks like that's making me feel these terrible emotions, I need to destroy it. Men do it, women do it. Okay? And it's not, it's not a matter of who initiated it. Okay, it's a matter of that marriage broke down. Sometimes the person that initiated the divorce is not the, is not the perpetrator. Okay, sometimes it's the other person that initiates the divorce, the person that initiated it. Like somebody said something, said we always look at the the last domino. I don't know if you know what dominoes are, right? People always look at the last dominoes. They never trace it back to what was the first domino that started falling, right? People look at the last domino and they say, oh, it's a fidelity. Oh, yeah, it was finance, right? And then they wonder why second marriages tend to, three out of four times, end up in divorce. Second and third marriages. Because they never learn anything. They, they go around the internet talking about it was a regret. She was so evil. He was evil. Men are scums, right? They don't really learn everything that happened in between. Okay? So, Okocha also clarified the notion that he may never get married, saying he surely will. He said he will get married, especially as his children are growing and he needs a partner that will cater for their needs. And this. So, he's going to marry somebody else to come and cater for other people's kids. Yeah. <laughs> men don't like that women don't like that on the surface men just they're not just looking around looking to take care of other people's kids sometimes they fall in love and they're willing to do sacrifice whatever to do what they have to do because they're in love right but there's nobody waking up randomly one day and say i'm gonna marry somebody so i can take care of other people's kids right some people, when they become a people of certain age, they are more open to that because they are people of certain age. Like, for example, a young lady who is 42, 43 may be open to being with a divorced man who has three kids, right? We know those things, right? But she will have to like you enough, right? But anyway, let's keep going. Some say, I am not going to get married. No, don't quote me. I am, who is talking? Somebody is saying, I'm sure somebody is saying, who is talking right now? This is the guy talking. Your daddy. Your daddy. All right. That's the person talking. Okay. <laughs> so, he says, some say, I'm not going to get married. No, I, don't quote me wrong. I'm going to get married. Most definitely. My kids are growing up. And so, I need a partner that will be able to take care of their needs and mine. Okay. I will get married. But I am just taking my time. All right. He's taking his time. This... On the surface, there's nothing wrong with that. But I would argue that he's not taking his time. He's just not feeling safe to marry anyone yet. If he's meeting anyone. It's either he's not meeting anybody or he's not feeling safe to marry the people he's meeting yet. The idea that somebody is randomly taking their time, that part right there for the most part is usually... Stop the cap! <laughs> All right. I have two beautiful kids, a son and a daughter. At this time, I am just focused on taking care of my adorable kids and that's it. You know, you can chew gum and walk at the same time. Again, stop the cap. Stop the cap. <laughs> when you meet the right person, you are willing to create room, to create time to make it happen. We make time. We create, we make room for the things we value. All right? Like there's no, oh, the things we value. A wife that could be a wife. A husband that could be a wife just showed up. But because I'm just focused on, no, 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 that's cap. That's cap, okay? It could be two things. Maybe you don't feel safe. I agree that the dating scene is a little bit horrific for a lot of people right now. 
And sometimes they don't feel safe because of the things they say to each other on both sides. So he says they are my kids and they keep me motivated. All right. So what's the lesson here? I think I've extracted quite a bit of lessons here already. Okay. What I'm they, they, what I really wanted to point out here today is that if you've gone through a marriage and it didn't work out, that's a blessing in disguise. Okay. There are some lessons that you're supposed to learn from that experience. The lesson is not that it's a curriculum and it was a success. No, that's you avoiding the lessons. Okay. It's okay to say a marriage failed. It doesn't mean you failed as a person. Those are two different things. But why should, why do you need to say it that way? Because you need to look at if something failed. You look at, look at it and say, Hey, what did I learn from that situation? Right. Including maybe you attracted the wrong person. Well, you attracted the wrong person. You are the subject. The other person becomes, is that what they call it? The object of that sentence. It's your responsibility, at least in terms of learning lessons, at least in those terms, right? Maybe there's some things I should, there's a way I can work on myself so I don't attract this type of people anymore. Maybe, just maybe, but you have to be aware at least that there's something I need to learn in that situation. But if you're going into it, just assuming there's nothing there to learn, that's why I for you. Eh? You will end up in McDonald's. Okay? Yeah, it was just, uh, you know, uh, you know, yeah, I regret that marriage. Will you keep quiet? Oh, let me see what you know they say here. <laughs> hey, Isabel, good to see you. Glad to welcome, welcome. Happy Sunday to you all. Everybody is like in a z mode, right? Zen mode, right? I read somewhere that in the future, marriage will become outdated and the home setting in the future will be that of friends rather than spouses. I wonder if that is true. Well, they're talking about the future, so we won't know if it's true until that time, right? Guess time will tell. Yes, time will tell precisely. We don't know what future holds, right? The only thing uh, the only thing I know about the future is that people will continue to have kids. People will continue to want to engage each other, uh, meaning socializing with each other, uh, not just socializing, but also continue to do career work. And the one thing we know about sex is that it's a very passionate thing. If you don't if you don't <laughs> if you don't con if you don't put in a container that contains that level of passion between two people you will end up in quarter quarter for a fact that is a fact okay and a lot of people are coming up with alternatives for marriage but those alternatives are not they're not solid you know it's like everybody you know everybody's coming up with some kind of alternative, they think they have choices, you know, driven by technology, you know, it is what it is. It's driven by technology as well. Uh, but I believe that it's just a natural order of things. We evolve, right? Some people call it devolve, whatever. It doesn't matter, okay? Not for the sake of this conversation. The only thing that I want to tell you is that if you're going to have sex with people, you will potentially have kids, if you're having kids outside of a structured environment where uh, there's a household with some principles to raise these people, keep at the back of your mind that you're potentially raising um, people that are directing our society, right? But structure is everything. As much as we like to have variety, we like to enjoy, we like to do things that way, just do you, right? <laughs> Well, reason why you're able to do you is because somebody brought some structure into that situation. They, they made things into institutions, right? To create some structure because human beings are going to be human beings. Okay? And if you don't understand that you want to do you and disrespect structure, you will collect. collect with two, with two. That's just the way it is, okay? So, I personally, I don't I'm not going to shame people into 
making things remain the way they are. The way things are, if it was that good, it will remain that way. So there are some things that we need to address clearly. One of them is emotional intelligence. It's no longer viable. You can't just run a marriage just because you're a man. No. It's no longer a viable thing. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's why you're collecting. That's why you're ending up in McDonald's everywhere. Okay. I'm sorry. That's just a fact. Okay. So it doesn't... <laughs> uh, he shot you yeah you will end up in divorce court it's not enough that you're a man it's not enough that you're a woman it used to be just enough you know because people didn't think they have options now they think they have options and it's not good enough that they don't actually have options if they think they have options just the thinking that they have options it's enough to destroy the status quo, right? So even if they will come back to it later and say, you know what, we were wrong. Well, there will be casualties, right? Maybe the next generation of kids will now come up with something and maybe we'll see people with, like, like you explained, uh, Toby and Tribe, like you explained, maybe people will now sit around in, in, in their house like, like friends rather than spouses. Yeah, but we already have friends. So, I, I don't know what will, what will so what will make it a family because the idea of family is ingrained in our head. Yes, it could be a social construct, but it's, it's part of who we are now. It's part of evolution, right? So we shall see. You know, in the meanwhile, there'll be casualties. Why would you want to? Instead of even asking why would I want to get into that marriage thing, you should be asking. Why would I want to be a casualty or something that's just chaotic? It's just chaos. Everyone. Everyone wants to do them. Just do you. Right? That's the generation we're in. Just do you. As long as you're allowed to be a human being. Well, we see how that goes. Like I said, I think there's no one size fits all to this kind of stuff. I think, however, within the span of a certain time, there is one size fits all. That's why we call it a society. We all move in certain types of directions so that we can have order and structure and the society can be conducive for people. When the society is at chaos, what you see is uh, maybe the closest thing that I should tell you is maybe the Nigerian society for majority of people in Nigeria, not you that you live in Lekki. Because even you that you live in Lekki, you still have to treat your water. So I don't know what you're talking about comparing to anything, right? Majority of people that live in Nigeria, it's like they are living in chaos, right? It's like they, they're not sure about tomorrow. They're not sure what's going to happen tomorrow, right? So imagine that times 1,000, right? That's what we're suggesting when, a lot of time when we say, hey, let's just do me, right? I like the idea of doing me. I think you should leave some room for that. As I always say here, I think we should leave some room for that, um, we have the six basic human needs, right? Varieties. Entertainment, number two. Entertainment. What we value is what we value. I like the idea, but also we like number one. Certainty, security, structure, order. We also like that so that there can be some level of fairness. Yes, in society, we need some level of fairness. When it comes to love and war, there's no such thing, right? We know that. But that's why they are love and war. But in a on a typical day, you want to be able to step out of your house and know that if somebody is trying to out get you, right, that you can call on some kind of authority to say, hey, this person, this man, this woman is out of order. And they can put them in order. Order. Masculine. Yeah, masculine. Right? <laughs> we need that. Right? Just as much as we need variety, entertainment, to relax, rest in your femininity, don't care about shit. <laughs> right? We need both. That's what makes it the human experience. But when we get into a society, everybody just said, just do anyhow. It's problematic. It's not good. Okay? When we get into a society where everybody said, just go in structure too, that's not good either. It's not good either. Okay? We need, we need to be humans again, okay? And part of being humans again is to have 
you know, to have like a holistic experience where you can look forward to and say, you know what, this is not a bad idea, right? So it's a little bit difficult. It's all over the place right now. It's messy. Part of the reasons why it's messy is no one is listen, willing to listen. Everybody knows a lot. Everybody's reading books, writing books. Uh, there's a thousand zillion people creating content around their pain. So for a, for a while, it's going to be chaotic. For a while. But this is the prestige family. We're going to do everything our best at individual levels. To learn what we can learn, learn what we can learn to learn how to navigate this world, right? If you're coming out of a situation, a marriage, you're divorced, it's not the end of the world. That was an experience that was designed for you to learn. There's some things you can learn. There are people still doing it right, okay? They exist. You just have to keep an open mind. If you don't keep an open mind, you will attract what you fear the most. It's magic, Okay? You know the equilibrium will be will be achieved one way or the other right uh you can push against yourself in your rhetorics and say you know maybe there's the other side of how i think that i need to start paying attention to all right so with that being said that's the lesson that's the main lesson that i have for today i'm going to cover two more stories and then we'll call it today we're going to keep it uh short and sweet sunday evening i want you to go back and spend some time with your family you know that's always my goal right i'll be right back Let's talk about 10 bad reasons to get divorced. Uh, trigger a lot. Trigger a lot. I'm going to trigger a few people. Hey, Esther. Good to see you, Esther. Trigger a lot. I'm going to trigger you. But keep an open mind. Okay. If you have any specific questions, you have pushback, turn them to questions, if you will. Um, and, and, you know, maybe I will learn something. Okay. Maybe there's an angle that I can't see. Maybe I will learn something from you today. Okay, uh, but the truth is that we're in a space where uh, I actually be honest with you. By the way, look out for the Valentine's special we have. My wife will be hanging out with me here on Man of Prestige. So we're going to be uh, having that conversation here for next month with you all here. So look out for that. It's already on the channel. Just set your notifications on so you don't miss that. Okay. So by the way, I asked that just before, I, you know, I said, what do you think, babe? Like, what do you think? Could be a bad reason for divorce she did what most women would do <laughs> right anybody want to guess what did she do what is it that most women will do before i get into it? anybody want to guess before i continue right now she did what most women would do in this situation i asked her what do you think a bad reason to get divorced will be her answer is what i would expect from most modern women what is most modern women? All of all of you are modern women, by the way. If you're here, I don't care how red pilled you think you are, you're a modern woman. Okay? It is what it is. Don't fight it, embrace it so you can learn the lessons you need to learn. Okay. Um, anybody wanna guess? What do you think our answer was when I asked her what bad reasons? No, no, those are good reasons for divorce. Those could be good reasons for divorce. DV could be good reasons for... That's what? DV is always a good reason for divorce. Like, uh, at least, you know, temporarily you have to be willing to live so so that you can be here to sort out tomorrow. Uh, yeah, what do you think? I asked that, what do you think could be a bad reason? What What is the reason why, that somebody could... This, I had to explain this to her too. What is the reason? This is why I ask her some of this topic before I come on because sometimes the way I'm going to pass is going to be terrible. But let me tell you something. Most of the stuff I talk about here, if I say the way it's coming down to my brain, you won't understand me for the most part. Okay. So sometimes I have to pass it by and say, what, what do you think about this? Just so I can make sure that I'm 
communicating, right? So I had to explain it to her too. Like, if somebody would tell you, if you ask them, this is this is my reason for divorcing my wife, my husband, and you would be like, you threw the whole bath water away with a baby? Why would you do that just for that stupid reason? A reason that you would consider just, it's not good enough. Not stupid. Stupid is like extreme. But you feel like it's not good enough reason to, to file for divorce, right? And she she wouldn't... Uh, yeah, so this would be good reason. I'm looking for bad reason. I asked her, what would be bad reason? You know, DV is a good reason, but I meant a list of general stuff we say every day. Oh, okay, yeah. So what would be the a reason that your friend said, listen, I went and initiated the divorce and they gave you that reason and you're like, are you sure you ever liked this person before? Because your reason, no, they had up, <laughs> right? Or, so what do you think our answer for me was? Because you are doing it right now, D-Love, you're already doing it. You're doing exactly what she did right now already. <laughs> Like, come on, there's got to be some reasons that people are, like the divorce rate is skyrocketing everywhere. They, they, no matter how you look at it, it's either people are not getting married or the divorce rates are going up, right? So I would say divorce rates are going down, maybe maybe because people are not getting married, right? I don't know the intricacies of those things. My job is to bring it out to individual level and increase your chances of not having to end up in that situation. On your on, in your journey from now on right that's my job what what are the reasons ice ice how you day ah that's a good one this is a good one ice ice is snoring oh boy some people need their sleep oh hey this some people need their sleep that bad that they gave such a bad reason to divorce well you know what that snoring thing, right? The, the, the truth is that I don't, I, I have never met or seen any example of any persons that filed a divorce because of snoring. They might complain about it. It might tap out with other things later on. It might be one of the things in the sequence, one of the, one of the elements in the sequence that led down to the divorce. But just for that sole reason, yeah, I don't know. Uh, tell me, there might be somebody out there. <laughs> <laughs> that file divorce the way they eat and talk yeah that falls in the same category right the way when you just eat anyhow right i want divorce no usually they just stay there and punish themselves when they annoy when they annoying themselves in that way unless it's a part of many many other things right and i do believe that people don't have one reason it's a series of many things right that will make people uh, pull that trigger. But good one, Isaiah, is good one. Yeah, um, yeah, those will be terrible reasons if that exists, you know. But I've got a, I've got ten that I want to cover here, and uh, and I will explain why I think they are in real life, in reality, and how they work. Okay, for each one of these reasons, right? You can think of short term, mid term, long term, right? Some people experience some of these things in a very short term and it's just that bad for them. Some people, it's like a consistent situation. For people, it's like they've been dealing with it for years. I believe that there are some deal breakers. Um, most deal breakers is not something that people are able to identify before they are in it. All right. So let's already right there stop the car before we move too far. Stop the cap. <laughs> all right. I know you want to identify all your deal breakers before. Most of the time, you don't know what your deal breaker is until you are in it. Until you find yourself in it and you're like, I can't deal with that. Okay. In reality, meaning when that finally happens to you, it's either it's not that easy for you to leave or you didn't know this was your deal breaker. Like that, you were ready to leave, even though you didn't think earlier that that would be a deal breaker for you. But after the event happened, it tampered with your level of trust for that marriage. You felt extremely betrayed. 
uh, you couldn't sleep at night, you felt like you're hearing voices in your head and you had to run away, it was just that bad for you. And you probably ran your mouth 10 years ago when you were chatting on YouTube, why some people leave their marriage so easily, <laughs> right? But then that happened to be a deal breaker for you. You know, so it's not stuff you can, it's only so far you can prepare for quote unquote uh, deal breakers, you know. People don't tell main reason, but 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 all encompass. Mm, yes, they, they couldn't. More so that they couldn't tell because they're caught up in the emotions, you know. Yeah, more, more so. I says I miss you. Where have you been? So let's get into number one reason on my list here. Number one is incompatibility. Hola, are you saying some people are just always compatible? Bruh. You were compatible when you were doing that career work, right? You were compatible when you were in love. You were compatible when you thought she had, she had big nyash. You were compatible when you thought she was doing well financially. Oh, it wasn't about the finances, Abby. He just thought you were compatible. But okay, you were compatible when syphilis never enter, right? Suddenly, you get into the middle of a place and suddenly... You're no longer compatible, right? Some people say uh, sexual incompatibility. Why? Because you've been learning some new things and it's not it's not stepping up his game, right? <laughs> right? But most times when people talk about incompatibility, I do think incompatibility exists. I do think most times when people talk about it, it's big cap. Stop the cap! <laughs> okay? There are other issues going on. It doesn't mean there are no other issues, but it's not incompatibility. See, all of us, every single one of us, right? You're going to have an experience inside of your marriage. No matter how much you prepared, you're going to have that moment that you start to question how compatible you are with your partner. When you accept this as a reason in general in society, you're now giving license to every moment that a person feels like they're not compatible to just pull the trigger on their family yeah men are pulling triggers on their on divorce right now because there's enough lame feminine men on the internet telling them to not deal with nonsense so what do they do they say yeah i just have to move on because it just seems like she's a typical woman yeah so you're gonna end up with another typical woman you dummy <laughs> right so uh incompatibility it could be a thing i just want any of the reasons that i'm going to give you henceforth you got to be careful with them you have to be careful with these reasons they will creep in your mind that moment is coming when you feel like i just don't feel like we're compatible when did that start was it right after the wedding or before the wedding <laughs> right we need, we need, like, it could be, but we need to, you need to answer further questions before we will accept that as a good reason from you. Okay? We need you to answer more questions. The same thing goes for the other reasons I'm going to give you right now. Yeah. They noticed but thought their partner would change or would, or they could uh, cope. That exists too. But some are just noticing for the first time because it's actually just POC finish. They are taking what is readily available for granted. Suddenly, what is now readily available is like, you know, suddenly it could be better on the other side. This is a real thing. The grass is greener on the other side syndrome. It's a real thing, right? Suddenly... They are imagining, they're fantasizing about the idea that they are more compatible with somebody that they don't live with right now. Why? Because precisely they don't live with that person right now. Right? And yes, some people are just not compatible. Okay? But remember, marriage was also about commitment see i'm not even the type to push commitment down people's throat too much because this is reality if someone don't want date the marriage they don't want to be there <laughs> it's better to let them go uh, all right <laughs> it's better that that 
if there's any chances of fixing anything, it's going to start with your ability to let go. Okay? It's going to start with that. However, however, uh, it goes without saying. I have to tell you that a lot of people that are busy running around the internet talking about incompatibility are basically lazy-minded people that don't want to do any further work beyond how they feel in a moment. That's what's going on. <laughs> Julian Lifestyle. Julian Lifestyle said, after the wedding. Okay? After the wedding, after you committed. You know what commitment means? Commitment means you set what you said you would do, right? And long after that feeling, that mood you set it in has left you, you decide that you're going to do what you said you would do, right? It's a question of integrity, as a matter of fact. And I see these days people don't care. They don't care about integrity anymore, right? They just uh, like, no, it's just how I feel. I'm just going to do me. <laughs> okay. We're in that space. Both men and women are doing it. And we're all ending in the potter potter. That's why you see that it's terrible everywhere. Uh, yeah, I don't want to link it link it too far. But that's the, the key thing I want you to learn out of this one. Shout out to you, uh, Julian and Open Floor. Welcome, welcome. Happy Sunday. The key thing is to, to be careful with these reasons, okay? Um, I don't know. We can basically look at everything and say they're all bad reasons for divorce because divorce is everybody hates it, right? Um, I think um, we don't get ultimately this is what my wife said. <laughs> and that's why I was saying I size and D Love was already doing it. She was like, I don't think I can tell anybody what is bad or what's good or dude. Yes, you can, bruh. <laughs> We know what bad reasons are, you know, when when you get any reason you give, no matter how solid it sounds on the surface, any reason you give and you haven't done the work, yes, that would be bad. Now, on the surface, it can look good, even including DV, all right, even including DV. When I say leave when there's DV, I mean leave now, like save your life, leave now. It doesn't have to be a permanent decision. I know we live in a time and age that we should tell everybody it, that needs to be a permanent decision. If it's a narcissist, that needs to be a permanent decision. No, it's not. No, it's not. As a matter of fact, that's a narcissistic thing to say. That's pride talking. As a matter of fact. See? We have a hard time looking in the mirror, all of us. Have you ever considered that? That may be a narcissistic thing to say. You say, no, if you find a narcissist, just leave. Have you ever considered that that's a narcissistic thing to say? Because suddenly you're, you could never be the narcissist, right? Says who? <laughs> Have you read the meanings of the narcissism? <laughs> Have you self-absorbed, like holier than thou, right? <laughs> okay, all right. We'll, we'll, yeah. The consideration exactly <laughs> yep let's let's move on to the next one let's move on to the next one the next one on this let me know if you do like this uh style of uh stories by the way i'll be releasing more of them if you like them number two i wasn't ready for marriage wait wait, wait. i'm not saying the reason why you didn't get married okay i need to slow you down here okay i'm saying you're inside it already right and the reason that you're trying to pull the plug is i wasn't ready for marriage majority of the thing reasons you're going to see here are going to be attached to people's temporary feelings listen i listen what i teach here is to acknowledge people's feelings okay because actually if you don't do that you're not going past that okay i understand that feelings are the reality they are what we are our emotions are real. They are what they are. Okay. But I said, let's acknowledge it. Can we acknowledge the part where you're just not feeling this marriage right now? The part where you're afraid right now. You're, 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 you're basically, this is fear, right? I wasn't ready for marriage. If you weren't ready for marriage, there's a good chance. You had so many chances to not get through with the marriage, right? Okay, Ola, what about a situation where we just eloped and we were in Vegas, we were drunk, and we just kind of went, we went, we went to the temple and we put a trigger. 
<laughs> right? What well, what about that kind of situation? Now? Allah stop the cap. What about when you know we're just drunk? I know. It's just sad, right? Not that part. The part that's sad is that you have to pull extreme examples into these things all the time. We're not talking about extreme. There's no extreme anybody here on Man of Prestige. We talk about real life things that are happening to people. People that actually had nine months to get ready for marriage. They actually went through it. They will have moments again. Especially if you're married early. If you married anything before 30. And you're a woman especially. You will feel sometimes like. Maybe I should have waited to 35. I, I rushed it too much. That moment is going to come. And in your mind, you thought it's because you were 26 when you did it. No, actually. You will feel the same feeling if you marry at 56. It's just that you will call it a different name. <laughs> and you'll be ready to pull the plug as well. Okay? At that point, you won't say, I wasn't ready for marriage. Right? At that point, you will call it... Yeah, marriage is not just, it's just not for me. That's what you would call it at that time. I wasn't ready for marriage. It's a bad reason, right? Listen, you have the freedom to pull the plug on a, boy, on a marriage you don't want to be in. I am giving you that freedom, okay? Because if you don't want to be in it, the other person is not going to enjoy it either. You're not going to enjoy it. There's no, it's pointless, okay? But just maybe, just maybe, just maybe you're not realizing that this is a temporary feeling. Maybe there's some things you can learn. Maybe there's a part of your purpose you're not engaging that's making you feel this way. Because the, 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 the idle mind is the devil's playground, right? If you lack purpose in life, the devil will come and play all day long. It will make you doubt every decision you've ever made ever before, including yes, marriage, okay? And when you're moving that way, Guess what you're provoking in your partner's moves? The insecurity. They're going to feel some type of way and they're going to lash out too, right? And that's going to confirm your feelings. Like, yeah, I knew it. I shouldn't have been in this situation, right? You guys will be confirming each other, right? Before you know it, somebody's going to pull the trigger and call it a day. I wasn't ready for marriage. Listen, I hear you. What else is going on? Let's hear it. What's the story? Okay? It's... If you're not feeling good in marriage, it's natural that you might feel like you weren't ready for marriage. And you're like 28 and you're talking about you're not ready for marriage. Some of you are 33. You felt like you just weren't ready for marriage. Oh, we did it too early. Really? You think so? I'm just saying, I have more questions. I want to hear your story. I have more questions. Okay. All right. Chie, you are late. Welcome. Good to see you. Right, how do you differentiate? I am not feeling it right now versus I might not feel it forever. That's purpose, that's purpose, that's a sense of purpose. And uh, you see, when a lot of people are committing to marriage and they don't really understand what purpose means, right? That's where that's coming from, okay? So, if you lack a sense of purpose with regards to the marriage, right um you when you hit that stumbling block when you hit like a, a little hiccup right the decisions get questioned but when there's when there's a price like that price is like the a, a meaningful life like a sense of purpose right when there's that price there and you're on that journey the journey is actually you're already engaging that result already it's almost no reasons right but the second part of it, the elephant in the room, is that you need a partner also that will make you feel comfortable in that situation. Yes, you owe each other, dare I say it, happiness. A lot of you are running around and saying, no one can make you happy. You're right, but they can influence your level of happiness, okay? They can, both men and women, okay? If that's not the case, men will not be running around town talking about they need femininity. Why? You're supposed to make yourself happy, right? <laughs> So, uh, I might not feel it forever. There's, you should just purpose and then also understanding that there's going to be a phase that you're going to get through that you're not feeling it. It's a phase, right? 
then at some point, if you pull through, right, as long as you're safe and you're not being abused or anything crazy like that, right? There's a point you pull through that enjoying things, feeling it forever becomes like a second nature, right? The problem right now is that we have too much information and that information is tampering with our ability to be able to seek it through that phase. It's not just marriage, it's, in, it's literally in everything. Even when you engage a job, right? What do we have today? People are not able to stay on the job for more than three years. Back in the days, it used to be 40 years. Well, there's a disengagement from why people waited on a job for 40 years until they retired. Something is off, right? If they jump ship to another job right now, they might get two levels promotion instead of just half a promotion, right? So it's a little tricky. It's just illusion and delusion of options. It's still fact that you staying in one lane, right? Staying in one lane and working on yourself as opposed to spreading yourself too thin is still the key to a life of fulfillment. You have to get to a point where you just know that I need to learn how to double down, build on top of the little success I had yesterday is still key to ultimate fulfillment in life. And ultimate fulfillment in life is always often not just money. Money is a byproduct of everything else. Okay, a lot of people are making money and big nyash their purpose. That's the problem right now. So if you say it, what is it? What are you feeling forever? If you can picture you've been 65 years of age and you're celebrating each other five years apart, maybe in age, maybe a little bit more, right? And you have your children. If you can picture that, if you can, if you have four sites like that, right? Things become a little bit easier. If you're short sighted. Meaning you're always looking at the other car that the other person is driving. You're not, you have no contentment, right? Then these are the issues. But what do we know about this generation? We are, we're living in a microwave society right now and everybody is looking for quick, quick results. And if the result is not hitting anymore, we'll go look for something else as opposed to, wait, I know this thing right here. Let me work on it. Let's find out what is it about this thing that's because I probably will you have leverage because you're already there, right? And again, like I said, unless it's something completely a terrible situation, which is usually not the case. Those are the minorities, okay? All right. Also, maybe they realize they can't achieve their motive yes still feel it. they don't know this the fact we know is what i just explained you know um there's some lane that you be on and you and it's just a lost cause right you are not able to tell you need someone to help you look at that and say hey this lane is not going to end good you need to exit right but a lot of people are making this they're self-medicating on those kind of decisions okay so and Isai says, yes, all times art is good and bad. Yes. So if you know that you're learning, you're learning as you're going, you're learning, you're learning. When you jump ship from this lane to another lane, you have to learn that thing from scratch. You shoot yourself backwards by 60 years and you've already used 60 years of your life. I mean, my math is up. Well, you know what I mean, right? Does that mean you stay in terrible situation? No. I'm saying make sure you assess situations because there's more than enough influence around you to tell you to jump ship right now both men and women there's more than enough influence around you right now that's encouraging you to jump ship emotionally spiritually and physically and your best leverage is your experience your best point of leverage is the experience you've had okay so just assess it very well and I would say get help to assess it if it's really that bad and it's confusing, then you that's why you have professionals to help you, okay? More information is supposed to be a good thing, right? But uh, every new solution creates new problem. Our new problem right now is that there's too much information and everyone is an expert. Mm -hmm. Yes, so honestly, selfish talk about do what makes you happy. No one can make you happy. All cap, yeah, that's that's yeah, yeah. No one can make you happy. You, you could if you can make yourself happy if it's working for you, please keep doing it. Okay, if you get to a stage and you're around certain type of people and you're not happy, 
uh, maybe maybe you're, you don't they collect okay maybe you're starting to collect because that talking point is ending up in but the photo to collect with the photo <laughs> talking points end up with the photo all the time because why they're general you know they don't assess your particular situation right all right so uh let me go on to num let me see okay if love rightly you'll be happy because you will be productive and secured yes oju kokoro is what i've been talking about covetousness lack of contentment right you're, you're looking on the other side listen when you look around enough you're gonna find something that seems sweeter it's not just you it's the rest of us right but Yoruba people say, Owanila be la ruge. Edify what you have. The way you edify what you have is how other people will edify for you. That's a fact of life. Okay? And if you want to put, if you want to send everything you have into Quattro Quattro, guess what? You're going to find more than enough information. In fact, majority of the information online, when you Google any of this stuff, if you Google, you find stuff that basically help you paint a more negative picture. Okay, they basically tell you that it's better somewhere else. Let's go somewhere else. What are the men doing now? They're doing passport bros. Let's go to Thailand. Let's go and find a wife over there. <laughs> Boto -poto. You end up in Boto Poto. Because women are the same everywhere you go. Maybe it's just you don't understand their culture. And the day you understand the culture, ah, you're going to, you're going to start to collect Boto Poto already. Hey, hey. That is good. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go to um. Let's go to number number three. Married to the wrong person. Similar. Wait. You just found out you're married to the wrong person. Abiyoti Shoju Koko. You are looking at your ex in high school, and you're now thinking like maybe you made the wrong mistake. Really. What happened to the part of commitment? Why do you think there was a need for commitment? Because there will be moments, there will be opportunities to feel this way. These feelings are valid. They're valid feelings, right? There's going to be more than one, two, three events where you feel like, ah, did I marry the wrong person? What would you need at that point? Commitment. Why commitment? Because commitment is what tests your level of integrity. What would ma ever make you feel like a person that lacks integrity can have a fulfilling life, right? You're married to the wrong person. Again, when did you find out? Was it before or after the wedding? Maybe Julia can answer me again. <laughs> Was it before or after the wedding? I've been two years into it. After C finish, don't enter. Did you even know what we're calling C finish? Do you even understand that the human brain is set up that way, right? Anything that's readily available will be taken for granted. So what can you do in that moment in time? What can you do if you're feeling like you are married to the wrong person? Well, number one, I want you to understand that we've all had moments that's making you feel that way. A little argument. Okay, it was a massive argument. Okay. It made you feel like you were a complete loser. Like what, what you cost the day you met this person, right? <laughs> But you know, about two weeks ago, you guys were at the beach together and you were smiling and you know, but every other three months you find yourself in this water photo and you're wondering, did I marry the wrong person? This is unrealistic expectations at best. Okay. It doesn't matter how perfect the person you married is. You're going to have moments where you're wondering, did I marry the wrong person? If you go, if you go to the court and file divorce, because you felt you married the wrong person, that's a bad reason. You go collect. Yep, you go collect. It's going to happen. Okay? Because again, what do I know? What do we know about life? Everyone has their own flaws. When you go and marry that other person again, if you manage to marry that person, you go and marry that person, you will find out that they're just humans too. Just like the rest of us. Yes, <laughs> they, are, they are just humans, right? So they're going to all the all the butterflies that was coming out of your stomach when you were chatting with them in the DM, right? You know, for three months you're still feeling it. 
Maybe you guys are traveling around town, whatever. Or you're hiding and seeking, doing hide and seek with the whole affair, right? When real life kicks in, like it kicks in in every situation, there's going to be that face, right? Every job you found in life, every job you found in life, you're going to have that first two weeks, you're excited. The next two weeks, you're going to be like, maybe I have... Maybe I had a better choice with the other company that was giving me an offer, right? And then after a while, you're going to find out that, oh, you, you, you know, this, this, wasn't, this wasn't as bad as I felt in that first three weeks when I, I was button head, you know? Mm. So married to the wrong person, could any of these reasons be an actual reason? Yes. For the most part, no, they are terrible reasons. These are integrity issues. On the part of the society we find ourselves in right now today, for the most part, there are some exceptions, there are some situations. Hey, Amaka, can you wave at me? Let me make sure that you're a human being. Actually, you don't need to do that. I know what I can do. Hold on one second. Amaka, can you hear me? Can I mute yourself? Oh, Amaka disappeared. <laughs> Amaka disappeared. Amaka disappoints me. Hey. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see here. So, married to the wrong person, uh, I'm a, I have more questions. I'm not saying you're wrong. That's a bad reason. That's okay. That's not a good enough reason. I have more question you need to ask some more questions okay a lot of people know they are married wrong but still go into it only to work out eventually they already knew but took the chance that is still an integrity issue the idea is that anyone you marry could potentially not potentially will, for, will inevitably make you feel like they were the wrong person at some point in the marriage okay they will at some point make you feel. I'm talking purely feelings, emotions, okay? Anything that becomes physical or you feel, you feel like your life is threatened, even spiritually, yes. <laughs> okay? I can't question that, okay? I can't, you know. I'm talking purely emotions, okay? This is that. These are the major issues that's ending people up in divorce court, emotional stuff, okay? Because I, I have way too many people that i know personally good people fantastic human beings but emotional will be your mate you know because there are there's another person involved so um they already knew but they took the chance well they had questions they saw red flags that once you take the chance you're not the only one that took a chance on a marriage relationships romantic relationships and marriages a hundred percent of the time it's a move of faith it's a journey of faith that's what pragmatic people call taking a chance okay uh, no no forget that life itself <laughs> life go 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 for it yeah? when you wake up and you jump in your car and you start to drive to work here yeah? that's a journey of faith who told you that you were going to make it to work who told you But what do you do? You committed to showing to work every day. I know it's easier because there's a paycheck on Friday. But think of marriage the same way. You took a chance. Is that what you want to call it? Sure, I call it a journey of faith. That's why people keep telling people you have to keep working on it. Whatever attracted you into that situation, right? may not be there temporarily. Maybe the person used to be rich. They're no longer rich. Maybe the person used to be big nyash, but now it's both stomach and nyash and you can figure out the difference, right? Uh, welcome to the real world. Nothing lasts forever. <laughs> Literally, nothing lasts forever. And and honestly, when people say, oh, it was just because of big nyash that I married her. Stop the cap. <laughs> That's cap. That's cap, okay? It's something that you connected with and it's kind of harder when you get into the marriage that you're not able to connect with it. For whatever reason, sometimes you need uh, uh, elders, you need professional, wise counsel to help you reconnect 
Yes, connection can be disconnected sometimes. That's the reality of life. There is no perfect person you marry that didn't have red flags. They don't exist. They just don't exist. And by the way, you're going to marry a person and four years into it, you're going to see some events. And it's going to make you feel like, I saw these red flags. I, I, Stop the cap. <laughs> you run me. For the most part, you run me. You didn't see red flag. You're just in a position right now where you're questioning the decisions you made. Mentally, emotionally, you're just in that position right now. It is what it is. It's going to happen to the best of us. Awareness is after battle one. Okay? Awareness is half the battle one. Amaka, I want you to come back, by the way. <clears throat> Awareness is half the battle won. Just being aware that as human beings, you're going to get into that space. As a regular human being, like, like, look, in jail, man. Why are you eating nyan, 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 like that? You won't say it, but in your brain, it's just cracking your brain like this. Depending on your personality, right? <laughs> you just, you're just like, you're going to get into that moment. You, you question everything. It doesn't matter how good you got this. The reason why I'm sharing that with you, I want you to be aware so that it's not to make you force yourself to stay in the situation. That's not the purpose of this. It's for you to uh, engage this as a skill set of, of uh, life skills, a life skill, basically. You assess situation and don't jump into conclusions based off of your emotions. Your emotions need to be acknowledged. They need to be taken cater catered for because at the end of the day, that's part of what gives us the human experience, right? But you, you have to be careful. You have to be careful. Let me jump to number four because uh, each one of them is 10 of them. Jesus Christ. I don't love my spouse anymore. Same reasons. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You, now, one thing you can tell me is I never loved my spouse. Maybe that that one has less cap on it, you know. Maybe that one has less cap on it. I don't love, I don't love, I don't love my, I don't love, I don't, I don't love him anymore. Oh my days, you are to real love. Really? That's that's how easy it is to stop loving people. Really? Did you ever love him? Now, let me make a very, very bold statement. Okay? I'm going to make a very, very bold statement right now. A person that has never been married before, you can't love a person. You don't know how to love anybody. Period. Period. If you've never, you can be in love. You can love the idea of loving. You can love the ideology of being in marriage. You are not capable of loving a person. You're just not capable of it, okay? Because love, when you talk about love, you talk about sacrifice, right? We're talking about test. You're going to be tested, remember? You, you suddenly start to have these feelings that you've never had before. Now you're calling it red flag. You saw it coming, but you, you didn't answer yourself. No, you're just questioning your decisions that you made. You're questioning a commitment. It was a commitment, by the way. It wasn't just a decision. It was a commitment. And this is a question of integrity. And if you have to save your mental health, and pick one between saving your mental health and your integrity, I will always ask you to mental health. Okay? There you have it. I will always tell you that. Because I need you to be here <laughs> mentally stable. Because not, nothing is going to happen anyway, <laughs> right? Without mental stability, right? But I just want you to be aware that that's a thing. It's a question of integrity on the part of this generation. And when people try to build marriage around integrity, duty, and responsibility, I tell you, you're going to fail because it lacks emotional intelligence. People have integrity. Their the, the, the capabilities of integrity is still around their emotional and mental stability. They are not capable of maintaining a level of integrity if they don't, if, if they're disconnected from purpose. What's purpose? Value. Right? What is it that they value in the generation that we live in? Holy work. I don't love my spouse anymore. <laughs> Did you ever love your spouse? Right? Well, when you get married, that's when you start to learn how to love. You're going to have moments of test. 
you're going to have moments of sacrifice. Some people call it compromise, right? Yes, and it will test everything about you. Because now, you're not fighting for your prize. You already have the prize. See, finish. No be your mate. Right? When you are aware that these are real things, a feeling, you're able to say, you, you have a better chance of calling yourself to order and say, Hola. All right, we committed. We're going to learn everything we need to learn about this. Let's do a project together. Let's re-engage the things we fell in, that made us fall in love together, right? Let's build on top of the fact that we're in love, right? And start learning how to love a person, right? Uh, love is patient, is kind, is all of those things that people that are in love will give a shit about, honestly, okay? <laughs> they don't, they're just feeling good, right? About whatever it looks like. It's a wedding. Oh, I'm there, right? <laughs> oh, Lord. Um, as I said, I think they love their spouse because of something which were not there anymore. Lobato, they were in love. Okay, semantics, granted, but they were in love, right? But loving a person, learning how to love a person is, it's, it's level of commitment that comes with that. It's more, more or less a sacrifice. Well, sacrifice comes with rewards, but it's not rewards you can always see in sight. You can't, it's not always visible. You can't, you can comprehend it in short term sometimes, right? That's why we call it sacrifice. It's kind of like you sow a seed, right? In season, in the right season, and then hopefully it rains. Hopefully no rodent will come and eat it up. Is that possible? Yes. Can people come and steal everything on the day of harvest? Yes, right? That's why it's sacrifice because you can't see that far, but you take that journey anyway. That's why we call it a journey of faith. Somebody has said they took a chance. We all took a chance. All of us. Right? My beautiful wife upstairs can turn around tomorrow and say, say, go be. <laughs> right? There's no guarantee in this stuff. What are the chances? Unlikely because she's human too. It's unlikely. When people are being fed emotionally, it's unlikely. Okay? Especially the longer it is into the past, the more when you are aware. But the key word is still unlikely. It's not impossible. So I put, oh, I, they, they took, listen. Anyway, Toby says, uh, no, I says, Toby, I, uh, you meet a reasonable person, she, your expectation not high, it's worth the work. The, the, the reason why we call work work is because there's paycheck on Friday. You know, that's a reward, right? That's why we call it that. So it's very simple. You don't want that paycheck, you don't have to do the work. You don't want the reward, you don't have to do, you know. It's very, very simple. You're not able to comprehend what $3,000 a week in paycheck means. It has no value to you. So don't do the work, right? So that's why value is necessary. We need to engage more value-based talk around marriage, not just duty, responsibility, integrity. The truth is that it might be illusions of options. Illusions of options have value. People will destroy everything because they think they have options. When they find out they don't have options, they're just casualty. It's just what it is. But they're all part of our society. And we need to all work together to continue to build a better society, right? Anyway, so let me run, let me run through pause the stuff, right? Number five. I'm in love with someone else. If you're in love with someone else, you don't think this is possible? Oh, yeah. People are collecting left and right. What to, what to? People are collecting left and right. So collect what to, what to. All right? Because of this reason. Okay? They're in love with someone else. They don't say it out loud because they don't want you to shame them. They know you're probably going to shame them. Right? They don't want you to shame them. Right? You know, they don't say, but people do get into that space. It's not usually not a standalone thing. There are other things that have happened before a person can just get in a space where somebody is able to creep into their life and then they start to feel like they're in love with someone else. There's a crack in the wall. Okay, there's a crack in the wall. And usually at this stage when this is happening, they, they don't care. They, 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 yeah, they don't care. Don't care. Don't care. Don't care. Still don't care. I don't care. 
I don't. I don't care. Yeah. So, but yeah, a lot of people go through this. Just in case you don't know, it's that yeah, I, you know, maybe they found out there's an affair and there's a are you in love with him, and they're not able to give a a solid no. <laughs> they can't get a you can't get a no right. If you get a no, you be like, okay, maybe it was just a a fling or something, a mistake or whatever you want to call it. All those terrible excuses, right? But they're not even able to say no. Or you say, so are you going to continue to see him? And they're not able to say no. <laughs> he shot you. Yeah. A lot of people are going through that. It's a bad reason to leave your marriage. If you're feeling that ahead of somebody finding out, you're feeling that maybe you're in love. It's a bad reason. Okay? It doesn't mean you don't have your license to leave your marriage. You can leave. I'm just saying it's a bad reason. <laughs> There's a good chance that you will collect later on. <laughs> All right, because that feeling, remember, it's a feeling. It's going to wear off too, like everybody, every, like everybody else's feelings, right? Uh, number six. This is not what I expected. Let's do a quick recap. This is what we're covering, by the way. We're covering 10 bad reasons to get divorced, okay? All right. So this is a video you might have to watch over again later on, okay? Because you're going to get in a space where uh, later on you're going to feel this when you do get married. Uh, you need to be aware that you're just being human for feeling that, okay? Um, don't allow anyone to shame you for feeling how you feel. But you need to be aware. That is a feeling. Number six, this is not what I expected. What did I say about one of the reasons why marriages are ending? Unrealistic expectations. Number three, unrealistic expectations. These are the issues, okay? This is not what you expected. First of all, it was impossible for you to have any form of accurate, stable expectations as a human being of what to expect in a marriage. It was impossible for you to have any kind of regulated, structured expectation anyway. So right off the bat, when you say this is not what I expect, I won't say it to my client's face, of course. This is a general public right now. We're just covering a class. But right off the bat, when you say this is not what I expect. Stop right. the cap. <laughs> so what do you expect? So tell me what you expected. What did you expect? I bet. Tell me, tell me. Oh, I expected that usually, you know, some kind of perfection or something like that. You know, I expected or, or something very vague, something like, like somebody that cares, somebody that can't, that's kind. What do you mean? What happened? What made you feel like she wasn't kind? And then they have to swallow a, a, a bit. I say. All right, so for example, the other day, and then when you start to unpack, it's like, oh, interesting. All right, so what would you do a little bit different if you were, if you had the power, if you had the power to reorder the course of that behavior, what do you think you could have done differently? Honestly, I don't know. This is just getting too much. Then they go into another rant about how they emotionally feel, right? It's normal behavior. You're a human like the rest of us. I just want you to be aware of these behaviors. When you end up in front of a counselor or something like that, what do you end up doing? Just arguing throughout the whole course. You're just looking for someone to help you point finger at the other person. You were right, they were wrong. As soon as they can admit that, even though that's not really what you're looking for. You're not looking for a person that doesn't have a core, a backbone, right? That's not what you're looking for. What you're looking for is the experience that this was a human being and you were a human being and there was a synergy, right? You're not looking for an experience where the other person feels less than. In the short term, it might feel like that's what you're looking for because they were wrong and they need to humble themselves and be wrong, right? That's, that's not necessarily what you're looking for, okay? 
That's not what you're looking for. What you're looking for is the feelings of feeling safe and secure with that person again, regardless of how it comes about. It's all feelings. It's all feelings. It's highly unlikely that you are, you end up with an extreme situation where somebody's just outrightly be evil. Okay. I understand that you don't feel that way because when you go through something, you, you, if you find one or two or three other people that you can relate with, you start to feel like the whole world is like that. If this whole world was like that, can you imagine that? <laughs> this would be a war zone, right? This is not what I expected. What did you expect? That question needs to be answered and we need to go in that rabbit hole before you can make this a valid reason to divorce. That's all I'm saying. Number seven, I want to pursue my dreams. <laughs> I want to pursue my dreams. This is a terrible reason to get divorced. Okay? Just like when people say, I was pursuing my dreams. This is why... I didn't want to do this, do that, do that. You could do anything you want to do as adults. You could do two, three of them together at the same time. You can walk and chew gum at the same time. Especially when we're talking about things that are natural part of our being, right? Like a natural, natural, natural characteristics of a human being is reproduction, okay? Uh, at emotional levels, what makes up uh, one of the things that makes up uh, make us a uh, higher uh, animals is the emotional social stuff. So it's damn near you call it natural, okay? So why why is anything that you you say you want to do just as part of society, as part of your status in society, like education, any of this kind of stuff, why would that stop you from learning how to poop after you finish eating? Oh, oh wait, 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 let me slow down. Why would that stop you from learning how to eat? Right? But how did you learn how to eat? These things are natural, things you have to do to multiply as a human being, right? But no, we know too much. Let's stop this. And go and engage this. There's always been a sector of society that will do that. When it starts to increase and increase and increase, uh, that's something we should pay. I'm not. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but we should pay attention to that. Okay. I want to pursue my dreams. You should have been doing that. <laughs> you should have been doing that. When did you decide that? Before or after the wedding, right? You can pursue your dream. How are you communicating that? Do you need 20 days girls trip to pursue your dreams? I see uh, some comments of people still defending the 20 days trip thing. Uh, girls trip, particularly. Girls trip, you know. But um, if you wake up in the middle of the night one day, you know, midlife crisis, you want to start pursuing your dreams and that's going to destabilize your family, that's a priority issue. And yes, that's an integrity issue too. I can't put integrity on you as a person because I think, again, integrity ends up in Porto Porto when people don't feel right anyway. You know? They will justify it or they may come back and say, that's not integrity, Ola. Well, I know, but you committed to something, <laughs> right? And suddenly that's no longer integrity. No, you committed to something. But no, let's just destabilize the whole family because I need to feel right temporarily. Men are doing it. Women are doing it. But that's the space where we are right now. People are trying to, let me just do me. <laughs> let me, do, you know, after all, I owe myself happiness. You know, uh, uh, screw, screw her. Let me just go and do me. Really? You will collect. That's a short-term feeling. It's going to evaporate like everything else. <laughs> and then you will have to come back to square one. What's that? Family, faith, identity, the basic things. That you need to operate as human being, as a human being here, right? That gives you a sense of fulfillment. Like nyash, big nyash, no, they give you a sense of fulfillment. Money does not give you a sense of fulfillment. It only multiplies what you are already are, what you already are. Okay. That big nyash you are chasing after will become just nyash at the end of the day. <laughs> you have to deal with that person, right? Anyway. I want to pursue my dream. There's nothing wrong with that. But that has to be done with respect to faith, family, 
your sense of identity, purpose, the basic things in life, integrity, right? Are you going to maintain the integrity of your family while you're doing that? Now, I want to pursue my dream. Let me just go and file for divorce. That's a terrible excuse. Okay? Why? Does that mean you should just go back home? No. What I'm saying is that there are deeper issues and we need to assess those deeper issues. These are surface symptoms. Things that comes to your mind straight when you're not feeling right in a marriage. Right? If you stop right there, you go file for divorce, you will collect. Okay? Because there's a chance that you're not going to learn what, you, <laughs> what you're supposed to learn. All right? Even if it's really, really bad. You will just basically be pointing fingers at the other party as their reason, as your reasons. Okay? So, let me go on to number eight. We're doing well, we're doing well. Marriage is hard. <laughs> Marriage is hard. What do you mean? Kill at me. Are you hearing that for the first time? <laughs> I, are you... <laughs> Are you hearing that for the first time? <laughs> ah, Wait, well, is that a surprise? Is this a good reason to get divorced? All right? Again, this is a feeling. Okay? This is a feeling. Um, let me just do me like you didn't know you existed before. I know, right? <laughs> The heart of multitasking. Yeah, even this one, I wouldn't group this into multitasking. If I have to go to work and I have to chew gum, uh, I said gum, gum, right? If I have to go to work and I have to walk to my job, it's three, five minutes walk away, right? And I have to chew gum. I won't stop chewing gum because I will have to walk to work now. I won't stop walking because I have to chew gum now. Is that multitasking? I mean, that's disrespectful of the term multitasking even in the first place, right? Like, these are, you have to, right? These are the issues. These are the issues. Yeah, so, I hear you. Yeah, we can call it multitasking on the surface. I'm just like, it's such a, that's like an understatement, right? Uh, he or she expected she would submit all our paychecks or him returning him, him home by 7 p.m. on realistic expectations, right? But when, when reality starts today, correct your head. Why, 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 why would you now want to go and get divorced because of that? Why would you be that? That's a problem. That is a problem. Right? Hold on one second, please. Hold on. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to have to uh, hold, on, hold on one second and uh, I'll be right back, okay? Let me just, uh, I'll play the countdown. I'll be right back in about less than a minute, I promise, okay? I'll play the countdown in a second. What a tux bites, I know you've probably seen her. He has a lot of beautiful girls with him. Tux, it's DMV, baby. Look. Beautiful. I look at all the while, but I can't seem to find a beautiful girl so I can make her mine. Time after time, I've been searching for a while, but every Bless me with your beauty, girl. Looking so right from your head to your toe. Chip like a cocoa bottle with a smile of a coin. My queen to be, you my destiny. Got a body of a goddess with your beauty. I'm impressed and I'm never in distress. Come on over and be mine. Things searching for a man they now. All the cats keep looking to mine. With the sexy walk and the sexy talk. She must be from a planet called the sexy world. I know I ain't tripping better yet. I'm thinking put a ring on the finger. We look good together. Take your place in my heart. With your beauty, I'ma say that I'll never turn away. Who would think I'm in love? Such the way she smiles at me. Just really, really makes me weak. The way she speaks to me. Just really make me go so weak. Keep tearing in her eyebrows. All I get to say is, wow. Well, the beauty and the reason night. All I really want in my life. Oh, yeah. It's been a while that I've been trying to find a beautiful girl. Fine, fine, brown eyes. I found me a beauty. 
Sorry about that. I had to address something really quickly. Alright, here she expected she would submit her paychecks. Yeah. So, now does that mean you have to now submit your paycheck? Does that mean you have to now accept for life that this person will keep coming home? No, it means there's an issue that you need to address. It means there's a crisis in your hands and you have to address it. That's what it means. Okay? It's not the cue to start looking for your way to exit. Right? The more you engage this as, I need to escape, I need to shut down, I need to fight and just be nasty about it, the more you will attract the potential of that reality that you might just have to leave that marriage. Okay? So that's where we are in our society right now. It's just something to be aware of, just in case you find yourself in that situation. Nine, God told me to leave. <laughs> so what do you say, Ola? I shouldn't just obey God. No, you should obey your God, though. I'm just saying, you should tell us the rest of the story so that the rest of society will stop thinking that Marriage is just terrible, it's bad. They're like, no, the humans in it are moving a certain way. Everyone is trying to do them. Everyone is trying to just be happy. Okay? And they, they, they have... Yeah, microwave society. That's what we live right now. And we will point fingers at anything, including God. <laughs> That's our reasons why we want to run from responsibilities. We need to stop paying attention to that. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Number 10. Bad sex. Okay. Should you stay if it's bad? That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that this is fixable. For the most part. You can fix this. Okay. When did you start experiencing bad kiriwa? When did you start? Before or after the wedding? At what point did you start to feel like, hmm, can you trace your step backwards and see when, when did it start? Is it because of childbirth? Is it because she's no longer taking care of herself? She doesn't smell as good as she used to smell? Well, again, the key thing with any of these things I call bad reasons is on the surface, usually people will give them as an excuse. To be fair, people will just say them because they're already done anyway. They're just looking to say something right but if this is the one thing because when people when enough people start to say it as a thing it becomes everyone else's truth people will start making it like oh it's actually a thing and then you start people will start beating their chest and talking like yeah that's a thing that's a thing for real like no no it's not like incompatibility that's a that's, that's a very very popular thing to say and when people say they beat their chest with it, like, yes, it's true. Like, no, it's, it's not true. What about the person that's saying it? Did they mean that or they mean to say something? It's a function of the state of the mind that, of the person that's saying. We're just incompatible. Are you patient enough to say, what do you mean incompatibility? In what area? Masa. You know, the marriage is an institution. There's a lot of areas to it. What part? Where were you incompatible? Are you, a, are you asking further questions or you're just... You just take it and you go and repeat it to the next person. As that's a thing. Right? If you're having bad career, it's fixable. Okay? The first step is trace your step backwards. When did it start? When did that start? Is there something that you can point fingers and say, particularly if he improves in this way, he just he doesn't he doesn't do uh, foreplay, he just wants to pounce on me. He thinks we can just do it the way we did when we were dating. Yeah, have these conversations. Let's start talking about it. Let's unpack it. Hmm? Let's start having these conversations before we conclude as a blanket. There's a lot of blanket stuff all over the place. No one is digging down deeper into individual levels to see what's actually going on. Okay? That's where we are with it. Um, by the way, my voice is still healing. So, and my eyes is barely open, as you can notice already. 
So I'm still gonna go rest a little bit. Hey, size Sokwe, who assess sex to call any bad or good? The person, the person that's uh, <laughs> the person that's complaining about it, right? They don't. They might say to friends, right? Um, and they don't always say it that way. Again, they can say that like a thousand different ways. But the idea is any of this surface stuff needs to be assessed. Any of this stuff, stuff, surface stuff needs to be assessed a little bit deeper by you. If you can't, very likely you can't because you're the person in, in the situation, right? Um, talk to a wise counsel. Okay. But why? Why? I just don't want the marriage anymore. Oh, okay. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. If just if you just don't want the marriage anymore, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay. But that's questionable integrity. Okay. Because the other person, another human being that was involved in that, they were they were at least counting on at least we can talk about stuff. At least we can talk about stuff together before we decide before we go to the worst case scenario right okay so again uh sebola always hit on expectations yes it's, it's uh, every everything almost everything can be traced back to expectations yes because you can't have like what is it i don't know you don't know you don't know what you're saying i do to you don't know what you're doing what you say i do so it's like that's that's the first step in the expectation issues, you know. Well, that's why couple needs to discuss. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Somebody just said compromise. Yes, arguments are healthy. See, they're still arguing with themselves, right? I just saw that comment just came in just now. Still arguing with themselves, right? go for your type if you're a freak then go for a freak until you find out two years down the line that they're they're, they're they're not as freaky as you thought they were because you have a different level of experience too now so you're like wait i thought she was freaky but she was doing basically nothing <laughs> right okay <laughs> all that that's again expectations right all that is in the pot of water now because people are different levels. You are two different moving train, different speed usually, you know. And what do they want to do? They want to argue with themselves instead of sit down, sit your butt down somewhere and assess the situation like your life depends on it, right? If you don't think your life depends on it, but let's wait if you tried it a few times. Let's see if you still feel. Nobody's going to tamper with you. It's how you feel inside after you've gone through, after you've run through yourself like this. It's how you feel inside. It's going to tamper with your self-esteem. It's going to tamper with your self-confidence. Like who wants to fail over and over and over and over? Nobody wants to do that. It's not about anybody attacking you or making you feel some type of way because you failed. No, it's about you're part of the society, the society standards, right? And you will start questioning yourself. What is he so I mean, what is it that's smelling like fat on my body? You will ask yourself those things and it just makes things worse. Right? So, um, yeah. Things need to be assessed. When your partner say bad sex, then your partner has tried someone else <laughs> or expected more. Maybe because that where you know it could just be internal feelings. It could be completely internal feelings. It could be just bleh, same over and over. If you get the same thing over and over the same way all the time, that can make a person start to feel funny. You know, it could be that. It could be because they're watching too much porn. It could be so many things, but. It doesn't matter. The point is that that's your partner and they're feeling some type of way. If they bring that up as an issue, take it as an opportunity to go to the next level, right? But most people, what they do, they take an offense to it because in that moment, they feel like, oh, so I'm not good enough to satisfy you. That's a natural feeling as well. But just be aware that, hey, you don't want to engage that natural feeling thing. You want to feel it, acknowledge it, but say, hey, this is an op I know better because I was here when Ola was talking about it a few years ago. I know better. This is an opportunity to go to the next level. 
But a lot of people will end up in the pot of water because they were dismissive when their partner was bringing an issue up. Let, let's not cap about that. We all do that, right? They bring it up. You feel it as an attack. You're dismissive about it, you know. Uh, question. The expectation thing is a big deal. So what do you think is the difference between having standards and having expectations? That's a fantastic question. That's a fantastic question. So the difference is uh, for me. I'll speak about me, right? The difference for me is there's some things for me, right? I might even call them. What's the language that you guys used to use? Um, non-negotiables, right? There's some things for me. They're very, very, like they're very so basic that I probably wouldn't get in a situation in the first place where those things are questioned. Um, you know, that as you might want to call it standard that I wouldn't, we probably won't gel. We probably won't end up in a marriage if this were, if this were big deals in the first place, right? So I'm trying to find an example. See how hard it is for me to find one, right? Because these things work by themselves. I don't have to over, overly express it or be looking at red flags all over the place for it. There's certain type of people with certain type of lifestyle. Like a girl, I'm just honest with you. A girl that's always smoking weed and she's always drinking and she's falling apart when we're coming back from the club. Even if I was at that same club, there was no way I was ever going to marry such a person. It just doesn't gel, right? You might want to call that standards. If I now marry that person, I now expect that they will become a wife. <sighs> Don't be juju be that. Don't be juju be that. Right? That's a problem. That's some of the problems we're dealing with. Now, so for me, standards are a lot of things that we call standards. Not we, because I've been out of the game for 15 years now. A lot of things that this generation from all the conversations I'm having that they call standards are unrealistic expectations. There's almost no difference. Okay? And that's the problem. Okay? So the question might be like, what should be standards then? Something that has to do with your values. Maybe from where you're coming from, you're, just a, you're Muslim and you wouldn't deal with anybody that's not Muslim. It could be your personal standard. There's nothing wrong with that. Right? I wouldn't call that unrealistic expectations. I call it unrealistic expectations. If in reality, that person has always been a person and when you end up in a marriage, they become a person. They didn't become a person. They've always been a person. Meaning, they fart at night when they're sleeping and sometimes they snore loud enough for you, a light sleeper, to not be able to sleep. Right? They didn't just fall out of the sky and start doing that. It's usually, even if anything, some people grow older and they do more of those things. But it's usually some kind of gradual change, right? That would be unrealistic to expect that a person will not fart in their sleep. Is that good enough? Even though somehow they managed <laughs> to not show you that part of them when you were dating, right? Would you put that on your list? I know it's something stupid, but would you put that on your list as in like, these are my standards? Well, that kind of standard will fall in the pot of pot of by the time you get married, because they're going to be humans. They're going to be a little bit more comfortable. They're going to eat with the whole size of their right mouth. And it's going to make sounds that you don't like. I know. Right? I'm trying to give some more blatant examples of things that might happen. If they're humans, they'll be humans. Sometimes they might, you know, not they may not be in the mood all the time. For example, they're not in the mood sometimes. Maybe you notice they're not a morning person. But when they, when she was coming over all the time to come and do kerewa and sleep overnight, you didn't notice because when she wakes up, it's all exciting. She's not at home. She's with you, so she seems excited in the morning. When you've married now, she's not really a morning person. And you're having a hard time adjusting to that. That is an unrealistic expectation. We've all had them. My own thing is be aware that you have them and manage them. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Hey, is this thing that this person doing, is it completely all uh, unreasonable as a human being? If you say no, adjust yourself accordingly. I say, I'm going to have to love this man exactly this way. 
right? Or this woman, this way, right? Banter about it, joke around it. You know you snore loud at night, right? No, I don't snore. I know I don't snore. How do you know you are asleep, right? But things like that, right? But we have very, very basic, stupid stuff becoming issues, right? If you give me some real life examples, a guy who's just not, if he's not kind, if you don't feel like he's kind when you were dating, you absolutely should not get with that person. It's only going to get worse when they, when C finish enter. That's not unrealistic expectation. They're not kind. That's a basic, that's basic level standard. Right? Love is kind. Love is patient. If you feel like they're not patient enough with you, by the way, a person that's patient with you might not be as patient when you end up in a marriage. If you think they should be the same patience level, that's unrealistic expectations. Okay? They will have to grow to that level to deal with that level of you guys have known each other now and they need to adjust too, right? To be, it's a little bit more effort on their part. To be patient with you after marriage it's less effort to be patient with you when they were just in love and it was before marriage they were infatuated and that's not necessarily a bad thing it's natural uh of course and order of things right when you don't know a person but you're in love with them you are excited about the idea of being with them you are a lot more patient with them it's all realistic expectations to expect that person to have the same level of patience right out uh, uh, right 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 um right after the wedding right the first two three years all that stuff is going to get tested so after they get tested you guys will assess wise counsel and say hey welcome to the real world <laughs> now that thing is going to get tested right so this unrealistic expectation thing, yes, it might sound like I'm, all, uh, I'm always talking about it because it shows up everywhere. It shows up everywhere. So standard, basic stuff, right? There's some, maybe I will list them out later on some kind of list, but you know, everyone's list might be different. But I don't want you nursing list all over the place. There's a way you feel that you know that something doesn't feel right. Like somebody's not kind. That's how you feel. It doesn't matter if you're accurate or not. You don't feel like they're kind. Don't expect them to be kinder. It's going to get worse. Like I said, patience. They have patience, right? It's a part of their personality. Yes, they might maintain some of that, but they're going to lose some of that. It's going to get worse before it gets better. Like every progression of anything that's meaningful in life. Okay? As I say, <laughs> this was Sha. Wala, po. Wala, wala, wala. <laughs> I need to find that sound effect. Hey, just Jay, good to see you. Good to see you. All right. So yeah, that's um, that's it. What are the lessons today? What did we cover quite a bit of stuff today? Um, let's just all be guided, okay? Um, let's be guided. Um, let's keep coming back. You know, let's keep talking about this kind of stuff. And uh, in reality, I can't tell anybody that. They have, like, directly, I can't look at a person in their face, and that reason is a bad reason to divorce, no. What I will be doing is asking them, what do you mean? Okay, so give me, like, paint what that looks like. So help them assess and show them where they might still have some power. Usually they have power that they're not able to engage yet, okay? Uh, and uh, also in reality, we find out that these bad reasons are bad reasons after they've already filed for the divorce. That's not necessarily... A bad thing either. <laughs> Thank you for telling me. I'm gonna go look for portable. Yeah, I think I was trying to figure out who did wala wala wala, but I think that's the person. I'll find it. <laughs> right. So um, yeah, just you know, it, it's very simple. Okay, it's not it's not that much wala. Let's let's go back up here. Let me round up with this. Okay, it's actually uh, super simple. Okay, uh, we make it complicated when our emotions creeps in. Okay. Or if, especially if we had some experience that, you know, experiences no be your mates. If you've had experiences, it's stuff you have to walk through, you know. But practice makes perfect, right? It gets better with time. Get out there and practice. Not theory, not textbooks, not reading all the books in the world. All those books are going to create more fear. Practice gives you confidence, okay? Practice, engage with people. 
like he said this is said this would that be a kind person or that's just an evil person right you know he said he, he said he's in love with kevin samuels is that an evil person should i avoid that all the way <laughs> should i avoid that all the way or there's something else there <laughs> like i probably will ask you what do you mean what did he say exactly which part <laughs> right but you get the gist right is is be human don't be you don't need to have all the answers this is the problem we we need to have all the answers up front before we get into the situation maybe 20 years ago that was a good idea because this we were in that space right now people have too many answers that there were that the, nobody was asking the question in the first place so what they complicate the issue for themselves they complicate the matters for themselves right okay it's very simple certainty variety significance connection growth contribution right you need to be able to take care of yourself on this level learn how to take care of yourself on this level so that when you when somebody is not serving you okay serving you doesn't mean that they have to be hand food speeding you so, uh, uh, food how do you say it? like uh, spoon spoon feeding you right that's what i'm trying to say right that's not what it means. But if their presence is taken away from your mental and emotional stability, it's going to get worse. Like, listen, everything is going to get worse when you first enter marriage because that's the idea. You'll be tested. Everything will be tested because that test is what builds strength. And that's what's going to basically shoot you into the future. Okay? It's not a, it's not a bad thing. When people find themselves in this space... Of course it feels bad. So what do they do? They run for all these reasons and they, they pull the plug, right? And it gets worse because there are two people involved. So when you react a certain way, the other person responds accordingly because they're just human too and they are responding with their emotions too. And men's emotions in this regards are worse. They're either going to try to control you, anger, right? Yeah, all this, you know, all this behavior that, that you've seen all over the place. People trying to put their foot down when they already lost respect in the first place. People not knowing how to, how to command respect, you know? So, speaking of respect, let me cover one more thing before we leave today, shall we? One more thing in six minutes and then we'll call it a day for your Sunday evening. So I'm going to look at this, uh, I'm going to look at the, some comments, okay? This is about regard respect. Since I just said something about respect, I figure we should just look at this together. Uh, this is on our Lola and Ola channel, the channel with my wife where we have discussions. And um, I wanted to share this with uh, especially all the gentlemen listening behind the scenes. I want them to see this because this is an uh, issue here. Shout out to Oyade, Patrick from Valuetainment, Gorex was here. Shout out to you, shout out to you. But uh, mothers will want to carry their children, fight for head now, even if he's gone and married. Hmm, interesting. All right, let me see. There's a comment I'm looking for. It's on a video called the, let's see, it was something about respect. How to deal with this? Okay, this video right here. So there's this video we did some years back. Let me see how long this video was. Uh, how long ago it was? It's one of our most popular videos on that channel. A year ago, actually, five steps to dealing with a disrespectful wife, right? So I'm sure that I talked about you know that respect is earned in one way shape. I don't remember the particular details of the content. You might want to go check it out actually. Okay, but it's for men in it's for men in general so some guy came here let me blow this up so you can see it 
He said, we don't need this women. So that's the title of the segment. He said, we don't need this women. <laughs> right? They, they've... We don't need this women. <laughs> Wahala. 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 <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, so i said well tell your face do you need me to convince you that you don't need this women all right why am i pointing this out listen if you have to say it out in words there's a chance it's, it's not that high of a chance but there's a chance okay maybe it's a very high chance there is a chance right that this is coming from a place of anger Okay, there's that's just a chance, a small chance. Okay, that this is coming from a place. Listen, the topic was disrespect from a woman, right? And of course, you know, a woman, a typical woman of the streets, should not just outrightly come into your life and disrespect you. But there's a chance, just like every other all those reasons I gave earlier that. Events that will happen in a marriage will sometimes make you feel disrespected. Because clearly, you're not seeing eye to eye, right? Okay. That's the level where I have to talk about it. I can't talk about it at, at your anger level. At your anger level, you're right. Kick her to the cup. Forget her in the restaurant. And just drive away. <laughs> right? But there's a good chance we're talking about your wife. Right? So, and, and, and you're capping big time. You don't have the full chest. You, you don't. You're lying to yourself. You don't have that full chest to drive away and leave her at the restaurant. You don't. That's a good. If you did, you wouldn't be watching this kind of video. You probably would have moved on to somebody else. But this is your wife. So I actually understand that. So you understand that it's a crisis going on. She's upset. You're upset. And, and you don't know what to do with the situation. Right? But after a while, you get to a space. You've watched enough video. It looks like everyone that's talking about this topic is telling you to pan that to the, to, to the woman. That's what it looks like. But you know why it looks or feels that way? That's your feelings. Okay? You want us to tell her that she's wrong. Okay. Okay. Hey! Quick, hey! <laughs> All right. <laughs> you want me to tell a person that I haven't heard their side of the story that she's wrong. Okay. If she's disrespectful, she's wrong. But it's no wonder that she's wrong. Because again, you're in a position where you're asking for respect now. Let's see what else he said, right? So I said, tell your face. Do you need me to convince you that you don't need this woman? Because, I mean, I don't know why you're watching a video about disrespectful wives. But then you kind of already know what you want to do. If you're, if what you're doing is working for you, all you have to do is keep, keep doing it. But I'm guessing it's not working, Abby. Okay. Then it comes back. He said, that will be too much to ask from you. You've done enough already. All right. So, hey, maybe it means that I've recorded a fantastic video to help him. All right. Etim Ebere. Shout out to Etim Ebere. Right. Maybe he meant that. But I doubt it. There's a small chance that he's trying to throw some shade there right what did we say we said cool because we were not going to do anymore we're talking to grown people with wives okay why is it that people that already choose this is some of the issues with the society we're in right now if you already chosen that this person is no longer going to be your wife you know abushe abushe done she cannot there's nothing else to you don't have to worry about a disrespectful wife anymore it's done Right? If the solution to dealing with disrespectful wives is to kick them to the curb, problem solved. Now you don't have a wife, much less a disrespectful wife. Problem solved. Why is it that that solution is not enough? Why are you still roaming around the internet looking for videos to help you address a disrespectful wife? What do you think they're going to tell you? That she's wrong? I think you already probably already told yourself that, that she's wrong, <laughs> right? Oh, by the way, no wonder she keeps becoming more and more disrespectful, <laughs> right? 
because she will multiply she will receive and multiply anything you bring to her but no that sounded like pandering to you but your reality is precisely what is happening right and it goes i now see why you had to write a book this is the book by the way you can absolutely download this book from loveandprestige.com let me post that it's a good time to post that right Hmm. There you go. You can download that book. Oh, let me just show my full face while I'm finishing it. This book right here. Okay. You can download the book he's talking about. He said, now I see, I now see why you had to write a book like that. Even the authors still need to learn from it. I tell you all the time I'm learning. So it's not saying anything new. I'm still learning, right? Traits not completely gone. No, here's the deal. I said, you're right. Thanks for stopping by though. Now, why, why did I need to share that with you? Okay, because it's part of the conversation. When you find yourself in the potopoto in marriage, it's not just you. Again, if it's anything worthwhile, it will be tested. Okay? Uh. If it's anything worthwhile, it will be tested. You will be tested. Okay? There is no such thing as growth in life if you're not tested, if you're not dragged through boto boto. <laughs> he shot you. It doesn't exist. If the solution is as simple as let's just make her, let's just tell her she's wrong. Or let me tell him, help me tell him that he's, he's wrong. If that solution was that simple, right? you would have created a better result because all you have to do is tell them yourself, right? <laughs> Clearly, that's not working. It's not working, right? But do you want me to help you tell you or confirm for you that your wife was wrong for, for being disrespectful? Abba, Abba is a lie, lie. Stop lie, lie. I think you you kind of know that already right why don't we go on to the next level what else because clearly you don't have you're not divorcing this person with your full chest you're not leaving you're not leaving you might be dragging yourself to the mud but your men, men generally don't leave the stat says it <laughs> they, they don't leave they might look for alternative way to satisfy other needs but they're not leaving <laughs> right You're the one telling me the story, but you want me to help you tell the other person over the internet that they're wrong. That's way. Eh? No be juju be that. No be juju be that. <laughs> oh, I uh, just did. You guys, I'm gonna leave it right here. That's, that's, I think that, that's good. That's good enough. That's good enough. Okay. The best way I can help you is re-engage your power. Either you're a man or you're a woman. Your seductive powers. The one that you unknowingly used to get that person to marry you in the first place. Yes, you can actually learn the skills, okay? And you can use it for yourself, for the good of you and your partner, right? And everything else is always going to end up in the photo photo. There's no way around it. Okay? There's no way around it. You're just going to have to put on put, put on your, your grown person's pants, right? And roll your sleeves and let's get to work. Why? Because it's going to be worth it, okay? All that stuff you had in the beginning is in the quarter quarter now. It's time to build something solid, something real, okay? You felt like she was disrespectful? Yes. Welcome to the real world, okay? Am I saying she just accept disrespectful? No. <laughs> no, that's not what I'm asking you to accept, okay? I'm asking you to accept that you lost respect. She's lost respect for you. I want you to accept that first, okay? So we can help you. It's actually the easiest, one of the simplest, easiest thing ever to do to regain respect from your wife, okay? But with all that gra gra aggressive nonsense, will it work? Okay? It's not, it's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> could it work it's not going to work 
you're going to need to calm down like a grown person and we're going to have to address everything there's multiple variables multiple levels of variables in there before we can move forward so like i said uh, amaka never came back amaka disappoints me but nonetheless this was awesome on your way out help me hit that like share and subscribe button we're still working we're still working okay we're working shout out to all the 19 people watching me live right now uh, thank you so much i want you to go spend some time with your family we still have if you're not in the uk in the uk i'm sorry okay uh if you're in if you're in the yankees you still have more than enough time to spend some time with your family i'll be back here tomorrow at 5 p.m monday okay all right it's gonna be uh, a lot of fun i have a hot topic coming your way don't forget valentine's day uh, my wife will be hanging out with me here we're just gonna chat and have time have a good time you will be grabbing your own glass of wine whatever in your house and chill and we'll just we we'll just yeah right all right so hopefully you've been enlightened and educated i'll see you on the next one and peace